welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way, have a seat with me today in the corner booth celebrating our 80th week. Sweeney clear the floor, Katie bar the door, Molly put on another pot of Irish coffee. It's time we get this show on the road. We've got another full house today, not a chair to spare. Coming to you from the Irish Roots Cafe at irishroots.com, I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. Yes, it's another free service from the Irish Roots Cafe. Phone 816-256-3360 with your comments 24 hours a day. Among today's topics, Cahill is the name of the day. Kilkenny is the county of the month. The Quiet Man Pub opens over there in Ireland. Two bishops oppose parish records, according to reports. And why Noonan is the top miss in Ireland. Searching for O'Brien of Limerick, O'Donohue, O'Laughlin, Risk, and Buckley. Irish census records coming online. And the first John F. Kennedy statue erected in Ireland. And what county would that be in? Hmm. Hey, before we start in here, remember to get all three of my free podcasts online. Three broadcast series, one on the Irish in America, one on Irish families worldwide, that's this one here, and one on Irish song and recitation. And guess what? I think we got a brand new one might be coming up with uh, double hosts getting reports from all around the country. Stay tuned for that. That ought to be a good one, too. Uh, but now I think it's time we're going to have to move on to, uh, well, let's just take a note this week. Don't have time for everybody, but we got time here for an email was just sent in. Uh, gosh, I'm already a month behind on that email. Here we go. We got a note. It says, uh, Mike, I recently came across your podcast on Irish families worldwide, and I've been enjoy- enjoying your programs. And I was amazed to hear mention of Brefney Clark from Kill and Care uh, in County Cavan. And he said, I know Brefney, and uh, he also said the programs are very informative and very interesting. Boy, I'm glad to hear that. And uh, he says he's in the West Cavan area, and he's done a lot of research into the Irish language in County Cavan. And he'd like uh, to get a little help if anybody out there is listening. He's not talking about just Cavan, but the whole region. He studied the Irish language, and it, it existed there, really, up until the 1950s when it disappeared, just like it did just to almost everywhere. Uh, but there is even one family there who still uh, have maintained the the unbroken link from the old days. Uh, but he's trying to piece together any incidental or recorded information about who spoke the language, uh, where and when. And uh, so if your family came from the area or up there in Ireland and... Uh, uh, maybe your grandfather or your great-great-grandfather or your great-great-great-grandmother might have spoke the uh, Irish language. He'd sure be interested in finding out. He's trying to put together a picture of this. And uh, so be sure to just let me know and I'll pass the word on to him. And uh, he mentioned that he re- recently came across a website on the Irish in Montana and that talked about Mark Daly, the Copper King, who hailed from County Cavan. And uh, it mentions that he was a native Irish speaker, but to date he hasn't been able to verify that. And he said he knows that Irish was spoken in his home place in County Cavan at the time of his immigration, uh, but he's looking for some factual documentation too. He, uh, he also says, keep up the good work. Good work is the testimony of the person. Boy, I sure do believe that. And that's from uh, Patrick O'Cunahan. And... Uh, uh, just let me know, and I'll try to get you in touch if you got some information for him. I also got his address on the blog, so you can go to our webpage, click on the blog, Mike's blog, and uh, uh, not only that, but a lot of other things, extras will be on that blog, especially this week. So uh, you can contact him by going right there and seeing his address and even his phone number. Uh, I think it's time we're going to move on here in just a moment to the book of the month. Well, we're going to make it County Kilkenny, Ireland, Genealogy and Family History Notes. That's part of the Irish Families Project. That was a 34-book set that I put together over the last 30 years. Some of those books are big, some of those books are little, 
It all depends on what you're looking for. Uh, we'll take a little sample extract from that book. It talks about the names that were the most popular in the 19th century. And what names did I list there? Let's take the top 10, like Brennan, Walsh, Murphy, Ryan, Carol, Byrne, Butler, Marr, Dunn, Phelan, and Kelly. You know, as I read that Marr, everybody, I'm looking at all these old songs in the American Civil War, and they always talk about Marr's men, M-A-H-E-R or M-E-A-G-H-E-R. Uh, pretty famous in the Civil War. Uh, and a few more names that, that in the, back there in the 19th century in Ireland, Neil, Power, Purcell, Brian, Shea, Delaney, and Dowling. And uh, you got to remember that, that Mac or O can be put in front of about any uh, old Irish name, native Irish name. Or it can be taken off that name as well, too. So just uh, keep that in the back of your mind. And some of the other families that, that my book on Kill T Kenny mentioned was Dunphy, Grace, Archer, Forrestal, Cantwell, Comerford, Wandesford, Roth, Shortle, Sweetman, and Archdeacon, which is well known to be Cody, C-O-D-Y. That's a nice shortening of a name, isn't it? Well, that's enough of that book for this moment, and let's see. I wonder what Kilkenny families were on the map of the Four Masters. Uh, now, that shows some earlier locations for the families, and of course, that map is from the Annals of Ireland uh, by the uh, Four Masters, as translated by Connellan. That's the first major translation of the uh, Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters. And it's a large folding map, map that's in the back of the book, and that was put together by Dr. McDermott. And uh, it's an interesting thing. It was the first map of its kind. And there's too many names on the map in Kilkenny to give you a full listing, but you got names like Archer and Butler and Grace and McGillpatrick and O'Bolger and Broder, and Delaney, and uh, Cavini, and Lochnan, and Ryan, and Shea, and Shortle, and Walsh. And those are just a few of them, so that's just to keep you up and alert on what families might be. You know, people ask me all the time, how come my family isn't in that book? They came from that county. Where are they? And I said, well, you can't list every name of every family in a county. Uh, some folks don't realize that it'd take a Mack truck about 500 feet long full of papers to list every name of every person that was anywhere, but it's just a start. Well, let me see. Coming up later in uh, this episode, this week's episode, we'll talk a little bit about the new Irish census records going online and where that's happening. But right now, it's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. New full sponsor and member Dennis John O'Brien of New South Wales, Australia. And uh, he's looking for the O'Briens from County Limerick in the parish of Abington, or Abington, settling in the townlands of Rathwood and Rath in the 1700s. Many are now in Australia and the USA. Well, let me see. I know some O'Briens over there in Limerick, and they're both involved in the book trade. Hmm. You might want to get old of him. They might be tracking where some of the family's going now and then. Uh, number two, new member Nigel Benson of Quilty County, Clare, Ireland. He's looking for the Donahue family and says that his great-great-grandfather, Patrick Donahue, was born in 1795 in Ireland. And he immigrated to London, England before 1841 and lived there the rest of his life with his wife, Julia, who was also born in Ireland. Uh, and they had four children, including Patrick Donahue, who was his great-grandfather, who was born in 1848, and married Alice Amelia Cook in 1880. And they had six children. And boy, the story gets bigger and bigger. I've got the rest of his uh, uh, little query there on the blog, so be sure to check it out. If you've got a Donahue in your line, you might find a connection. Why, there's even a Violet Brindle in that family tree and a Ralph Benson. Pretty interesting. Uh, number three, new member Gerald Votilla of San Diego, California, searching for O'Loughlin of County Clare. And I know a little bit about the O'Loughlin's of County Clare. That's where I went and found my first real connection to uh, Ireland in my family tree. That was in Kilfenora. And I just went town by town, knocking on doors and talking to parish priests. And boy, Kilfenora was a treat right there. And, you, boy, you also notice there's different spellings, predominant spellings in the records in different areas. 
That's also something to look out for. You can spell O'Laughlin with an A or with an O, that O-L-A or O-L-O. And, uh, well, I'm sure if you've done any research, you're familiar with all those different spellings. Uh, number four, new member Hazel Risk of Chisholm, Australia. Tracing Irish paternal grandparents and other family members. Uh, number five, new member Michael Buckley of St. Louis, Missouri. Looking for information on Alpha Buckley, my great-great-grandfather born in Virginia, 1813, and lived most of uh, their life in Peru, Indiana. Wife was Elizabeth. And it said, Alpha may descend from Humphrey Buckley from Ireland to Virginia in 1639. And Michael's going to Ireland in a month, so he'd appreciate any help ahead of time. And of course, you know, if you're going to Ireland in a month, that means you got to dig into the American records as deep as you can. Obituary columns uh, in the newspaper sure helps. And of course, the church records and the marriage records. And not only the marriage and birth and death records for uh, and obituaries for your, say, your grandfather, but your grandfather's brothers and sisters. They might all have a link there that'll... Uh, be a common clue, and uh, don't forget to check them all out there if you possibly can at all. Well, what have we got now here? Uh, Cecilia Fabos Becker of San Jose, California. Your Conquest of Ireland complete four-book set has shipped. Should be there shortly. Michael Hayden of Australia, your temporary book, Beginner's Guide to Irish Family Research and Surnames of Ireland book has shipped. That's... Uh, Three in one for you. Hope you enjoy it. And that reminds me to say thank you to all of our members because without you, these podcasts would not be possible. Now it's going to be time to move on to the Irish family name of the day. Well, the family name for today is Cahill, and it's in honor of Anne McDonald of Victoria, Australia, who's a new member. And as I think I mentioned a week or two ago, she's looking for the Cahill family of Erie Court in Galway, Ireland. And uh, she's looking for Bridget Cahill, the married name, and was born in County Galway in 1810, married to an unknown Cahill male. I think we talked about those unknown males. And three children, Margaret, Patrick, and John. And Bridget was transported to Tasmania in 1849. Now, a lot of Irish were transported as criminals to Tasmania, whether they were or not, whether they might have twisted the tail of a pig or taken a, a birthday cake and got sentenced to three years of hard labor. You never know about that kind of thing. Uh, but this one is for uh, Anne in Australia, and let's just hope some little thing clicks along the way. And related spellings of the name, of course, usually it's O.K. Hill. Sometimes there's Mac K. Hill, and then it gets confused with names like McCall, and and uh, you can spell it with an H, and sometimes they forget the H altogether. So McCall uh, can become just McCall. And then you get confused with everybody who's named McCall from other origins. And some of these spelling variants are taken from the Master Guide to the Various Spellings of Irish Family Names. That's a gigantic listing of names and variant spelling groups that I put together a few years back. Uh, comes in handy now and then, especially for those rarer spellings. Learn how to link them to a more common uh, original form. Well, let's take a look at the name Cahill. I'll have a bigger uh, explanation on the web, but let's see what we've got. And uh, I see that the name of O'Cahill, of course, came from several, several origins, and it's very numerous, so... That helps to explain why, and uh, just about everybody dropped the O from the name. I guess it just sounded just fine without it. Uh, but traditionally, the name's usually given as a name in County Galway and County Clare. And uh, in ancient times, we'll find the family uh, centered in Galway, right near the Clare border, where the head of the family is often re referred to as the Chief of Kinley. And in the 17th century, you'll find Cahill and O'Cahill, they still had the O before the name, found as principal names in County Clare. But later on, that sort of changes. And you can also find Cahill in Tipperary and Longford at that time. So, boy, that shows you you got to research to find where you're from if you're a Cahill. It can be done, but you can't guess. 
Uh, Keating History also gives uh, one of the name in uh, Cork and Kerry, one family of the name. And that family descended from the same line as the O'Connors of County Kerry. So you got some relations there. You might not have known it. So all you Cahills might just be blood kin to the O'Connors of Kerry. And oh, the old historian O'Hearn uh, also makes note of a family uh, of that name on the borders of Tipperary and Kilkenny. And they held lands in Carlow and Wexford. So these guys just spread out everywhere, didn't they? And uh, there's also a possibility that some of the name could come from the name of Mac Cahill, which is from the north of the Ireland, particularly in County Donegal and County Cavan. Um, well, we've got some more on the web page, but that gives you a good idea on some of the history. And uh, that's taken from the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small. Uh, well, let's move on. Let's take a look at the Irish uh, family coats of arms. We've had a couple of families here the last few weeks that didn't have arms, at least not in the Book of Arms, but that's okay because a lot of very honorable families did not have arms. There's a story behind that. And uh, let's let's see, the uh, Cahills, why, yeah, they're found in the Irish Book of Arms in the Irish section. They weren't one of those families that come over and then got arms. They were the old Irish who have arms, and uh, the Chief Herald of Ireland today recognizes those arms for the Cahill family. Uh, that's a very nice distinction. Now, if we take a look at the Freemaster Index uh, on Irish family names in all our publications, you can see that uh, there's no problem finding the Cahill name because it's in the 1659 census. It's in the birth index of Ireland. It's in the families of County Clare. It's in the families of County Limerick and Cork and Donegal and, and Kerry books. So that fills up real quick. And it's in the tribes and customs of the high many by... Noted antiquarian, John O'Donovan. That's a very scholarly work and gets into some details on a lot of subjects. I don't know how deep in depth it goes on Cahill, but boy, if it does, you'd be in luck. Uh, well, that does it for the Cahill. I'd like to salute all the Cahill families out there before we move along. And our next little segment here is going to be the website of the week. Well, the website of the week is the National Archives of Ireland. And uh, we've had that before, but they do some good work, and I want you to go back there every now and then and check, so I'm just reminding you. Uh, it's a site to keep your eyes on because it's got an ever-expanding selection of records for genealogy folks, and the 1901 and 1911 census records are coming online. Uh, I'll have more details on that in just a little bit. Let's go right down there right now to Curious News and Notes. I think number five talks more about this one. Uh what do we got here today? Well, The Quiet Man, one of my favorite movies of all time, has opened up in Kong County, Mayo. And it seemed that the uh, pub in the movie never really existed. They just took a shop and, uh, uh, you know, uh, cleared it out and used it for the movie. And then it turned into a shop again. So now they've built the real thing, they say, because so many Americans came over there and were disappointed to find out they couldn't visit the pub. So the Irish, as accommodating as they are, built a pub, and they'll let you buy your Guinness there. Uh, John Connolly is the owner of the pub, and his uncle was actually an extra in the movie. So a lot of history there, and they're even playing, you know they would, reruns of The Quiet Man in the pub there. So if you're a fanatic on The Quiet Man, that would be a place to go just to see. They said they faithfully recreated it. They went back and watched that movie and even added the same uh, window dressings, things like that. Number two, 4,000 Irish grandparents. Now that'd be something to contend with. They've asked the Pope to write a prayer in honor of grandparents everywhere. And guess what? In Knock in September, it's going to be read for the first time. So boy, I tell you, it pays to listen to those grandparents. Number three, two bishops, uh, the Archbishop of Cashel and Emily, uh, Dr. Dermot Clifford and the Bishop of Kerry, Dr. Bill Murphy, opposed the National Library of Ireland when they allowed the parish records to be open to the public. And the public would be me and you researching our family history. They contend, contended that the church held the copyright to the, to the records, but that just didn't work. Very interesting. You never know who you're going up against when you try to get a hold of some records. 
Number four, Sinead Noonan of Dunboyne has been crowned Miss Ireland and will represent Ireland in the Miss World contract test in the Ukraine this October. I don't know how many of you are going to be going to the Ukraine for that contest, but that'd be an interesting trip, wouldn't it? Uh, number five, the 1901 and 1911 census records are going online, like I said a bit earlier, and they're going to be for free at the National Archives of Ireland. Some other folks are putting them on searchable uh, and charging a little bit, but this, I think, is going to be digitized and uh, uh, for free. And counties Kerry, Antrim, and Down will be available in October of this year. And that's good because I'm always interested in Kerry. That's where my Donahue ancestors came from around Glen Flask. And uh, the whole thing for the All of Ireland is supposed to be finished up by the year 2009. And I'll have a link uh, to see updates on that uh, on, the, on our uh, blog on the webpage. And number six, last but not least, uh, the first statue of our American President John F. Kennedy was unveiled this year by his sister, Jean Kennedy Smith. Uh, she unveiled the bronze statue of the president just about 45 years after he spoke at the Charles Street Dock in County Wexford. And the statue is right there in the same place where he talked. And there's also, uh, they had a photographic exhibition, uh, exhibition earlier this year that marked the event. And that was displayed in St. Michael's Theater. So three cheers for the Irish. How about that? The first Irish statue of President Kennedy. That's pretty interesting. Okay. Well, I think that's going to do it for today. We've got so many things to catch up on, and I've got to clean the cafe up. We're opening up uh, tomorrow morning special. Got a little feast going, so I better get on the move. Remember to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at www.irishroots.com or send by mail to our American address, the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360 and Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Oh,